Photoshop just got its biggest upgrade yet. This is Adobe Firefly. And no, it's not just another gimmicky AI tool. This one is actually useful in the real world. In this video, I'm gonna show you what it does, how to get it, how to use it, and what's next for Adobe. So let's not waste any time and jump right in. To gain access to this, there are two ways. The first way is you can go online, firefly.adobe.com, and it's free to use. Hold this up and use Generative Fill, this middle box here, and then you can upload your own image and test it out. But if you have Creative Cloud, you might find it very useful to have this as a part of Photoshop. What you can get by going over to the Creative Cloud app, clicking beta apps, and then installing the Photoshop beta. Now this is a beta, so it's kind of hit or miss sometimes. It's not always gonna be perfect, and sometimes it generates some weird stuff. But when it works, it works. And that's what's really exciting to me. So let me go ahead and show you some ways that we can use this. Here I've got my thumbnail from my last video. Now, what I didn't like about this thumbnail is it's just a screenshot of me right here with my chin up. I didn't like that I had my hand on my chin. So if I wanted to get rid of my hand on my chin here, in the past, I would have to use the clone stamp tool, which was a pain. That thing barely worked, and when it did, it just looked terrible. This thing works so good. It can be scary at times. Let me show you how I can remove my hand here. You just grab your lasso tool or whatever selection tool, outline the part that you want to remove. So I'm just grabbing my hand and my arm here just loosely. Click Generative Fill. You can leave this text box blank. We'll get to that in a second and hit generate. It's going to take a second to load. And then when it does, you're not going to believe it. Boom. That thing is completely gone. So it gets rid of it, but it also gives you three options. So you have variations here on the side. So you can choose the one that looks the most realistic. So honestly, they all look about the same here, but you can see there's a difference there with my collar. My actual shirt doesn't have this color that flaps over. So I'm gonna go with the third variation here. The crazy thing is you would never know that my hand was there. That looks so realistic. It matches the lighting. It picks up on all of these inputs and recreates a part of the image that was never there. So that's how you can remove things super easily now in Photoshop. The other really cool thing you can do is add. So. Let's say we got this beautiful couple here. They're getting married and they've got this wonderful llama. I'm gonna start by just removing the llama. So I'm gonna grab their rope and everything, just drag it all. So now I selected my whole llama. And again, generative fill, I'm going to leave it blank. Hit generate and get rid of this llama. Boom, llama no longer. And again, gives you three options. It can be a little funky at times, so obviously that one looks weird. This third option doesn't look terrible. And you could come back in and you could honestly clean that up a bit. Boom, so there you go. I just did it again, and I got this option, which looks a lot more realistic. So now let's say we wanted to add something to this picture. We're gonna take this picture, we're gonna do a little circle here at the bottom and just select an area where we wanna add something. Then when we click Generative Fill, now instead of leaving the text box blank, we're going to type in whatever we want it to be. I'm gonna say a little blurry rabbit at the bottom of this picture. They're gonna be looking at a nice beautiful rabbit and there it is, wow. So you can see what's cool about this is it's so adaptive that it's adding a shadow to the ground and it blurred it out, it looks like it's part of the picture and it looks real. So this is a real use case where you can start using this thing now. I've been using it to add people, add cars, add traffic cones, things like that that are missing from an original photo, adding plants, changing the color of flowers. That stuff used to be very difficult in Photoshop and now it's a literally a click of a button. So now another really fascinating feature of this is backgrounds. So let's pull up this picture of my dog, for example. I just snapped this photo of my iPhone right there when she was laying her head on the couch here. You'll notice that there's a few tools on this thing already. I'm gonna hit select subject. And just in a matter of seconds, it selected the subject. I'm gonna invert the selection and I'm gonna hit dinner to fill. And I'm just gonna leave it blank and see whatever this thing comes up with. Boom. So now my dog, instead of being on the couch is in this little rock garden <laughs> but it's also got a few other variations so here she is laying her head on a log 
That is adorable. They added a paw, I think. I think that looks like a paw. And then here's the third option, another concrete rock type of thing. And of course, I could have generated a prompt. I could have said the beach. That's so funny. So now she's laying her head on the sand. So that's what's really fascinating about it is it can tell that she's laying her head on the couch arm. So it transfers over to the new background. So now just like before, let's say we wanted to add a nice blurry flock of seagulls in the sky here. Let's add them. So let's pick this one. And honestly, they're not, this whole thing isn't quite blurry enough for me, but the cool thing is these come out as different layers. So I can take the seagulls and go ahead and just put a Gaussian blur on them, just like that. And I can take this background layer and do the same. So you can mess with the layers individually after they've been created. So now let's say this was a Christmas in July theme. Well, I can grab my lasso tool, circle my dog's head, say Santa Claus hat. And again, it adapts to the photo. It's framing her head and it's super realistic. That's something that would have taken hours to try to accomplish before with a really good picture of a Santa hat that you can't always find. Now just from this picture, an iPhone shot of my dog on the couch, I've created a Christmas card where I've gotten to add things to it. I removed the background. I created a unique composite that would have taken hours otherwise and you just saw me do it in like five seconds. <laughs> Again, this thing is mind blowing. I've been using it every day for actual work projects and it's been extremely extremely helpful. The craziest part is it doesn't stop here. Adobe has huge plans coming up, and to be completely honest, I thought they were going to die off as a company. But they're starting to be innovative, they're keeping up with the times, and they're coming up with crazy ideas for how to use this AI technology. Creating images with your unique style, photo mixing for composites, sky replacements like you've never seen before, all of these crazy ideas that are going to come out in just a short period of time. I don't think we'll ever go back to the way of traditional Photoshop after this. The AI revolution has come and I'm welcoming it in. Let me know in the comments below if you've tried Adobe Firefly and what your thoughts are. And if you liked this video, please don't be afraid to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.